Have you ever wished you could pay less for your everyday expenses? Well, there's a secret weapon that can help you do just that, negotiation. Now you might be thinking, negotiation? Isn't that for high-stakes business deals? But let's put that thought aside for a moment. Negotiation is simply a conversation aimed at reaching an agreement. It's a dialogue between two or more people where each party seeks to gain an advantage for themselves or to create a win-win situation for all involved. And here's the exciting part. Negotiation isn't just for boardrooms or international peace treaties. It can be used in your everyday life to save money. From haggling at the local market to discussing your internet bill with your service provider, negotiation is a powerful tool. And the best part? Anyone can learn to negotiate effectively. So get ready to unlock this secret weapon and start keeping more money in your pocket. That's right. Negotiation is a skill that can help you keep more money in your pocket. So what exactly is negotiation? And how can it be used to save money? At its core, negotiation is a strategic discussion that resolves an issue or arrives at an agreement between two or more parties who have different interests. It's a common practice in various aspects of life, from business to personal relationships and yes, even in our everyday financial transactions. Now let's dive into the psychology behind negotiation. It's fascinating to see how our minds play a significant role in these discussions. Have you ever heard of the term, anchoring? In the realm of negotiation, anchoring refers to the practice of establishing a reference point around which a conversation will revolve. It's like casting an anchor into the sea, where it lands sets the parameters for the negotiation. For instance, when you're buying a car, the listed price often serves as the anchor, and you negotiate down from there. Another key psychological concept in negotiation is the principle of reciprocity. This principle suggests that we are hardwired to return a favor when one is extended to us. In a negotiation, offering a concession can trigger a response to reciprocate, leading to a more favorable outcome. Understanding these psychological aspects helps us become more effective negotiators. For example, knowing about anchoring, you might decide to be the first to throw out a number setting your own anchor. Or, you might use the principle of reciprocity to your advantage by offering a concession early in the negotiation, prompting the other party to do the same. But remember, negotiation isn't just about winning. It's about finding a balance where both parties feel satisfied with the outcome. It's about building relationships and trust, which can lead to more fruitful negotiations in the future. So, how can negotiation help you save money? Well, from haggling the price of a new car to negotiating lower rates on your bills, understanding and leveraging these negotiation tactics can lead to significant savings over time. Now that we understand negotiation, let's see how we can use it to save money. Okay, are you ready to learn some practical negotiation tips that can help you save money on your everyday expenses? Firstly, let's talk about doing your homework. Before you negotiate, research prices and know the market value of the item or service you're interested in. This gives you the upper hand, as you can confidently challenge prices that seem too high. Next, don't be afraid to ask for a better deal. It's a simple tip, but often overlooked. You'd be surprised how many businesses are willing to offer a discount, especially if it means keeping a loyal customer. So, don't hesitate to ask. The worst that can happen is they say no. Remember, negotiation is not about confrontation, it's about collaboration. Try to understand the seller's perspective and work towards a deal that's beneficial for both parties. This approach not only increases your chances of success, but also maintains a positive relationship with the seller. Now let's talk patience. Good negotiators know that rushing rarely leads to the best deal. Be patient, take your time, and don't be afraid to walk away if the deal doesn't meet your expectations. Another tip is to use silence to your advantage. People often feel uncomfortable with silence and will try to fill it sometimes by offering a better deal. So after stating your offer, stay silent and wait for the seller to respond. Lastly, practice makes perfect. Start small, maybe try negotiating at a garage sale or a local market. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And remember, every penny saved is a penny earned. Whether you're saving on your grocery bills, your cable subscription, or that new gadget you've been eyeing, these negotiation skills can make a real difference to your personal finances. In closing, it's important to note that negotiation isn't just about getting the lowest price, it's about getting value for your money. So, don't just focus on the price tag, consider the overall value of the deal. Remember, negotiation is a skill that takes practice, but the savings can be significant. So, we've learned quite a bit about the art of negotiation today. We've taken a journey together beginning with understanding the fundamental concept of negotiation. 
We've learned that negotiation isn't simply about winning or losing, but about finding a balance that benefits both parties involved. It's about fostering relationships and building bridges. We then delved into the psychology of negotiation, shedding light on how our mindsets and attitudes can significantly impact the outcomes of our negotiations. We discovered that assertiveness, patience and empathy are key traits that can give us an advantage in negotiations. Moving forward, we explored practical negotiation tips that can be applied to our everyday expenses. We discussed the importance of doing our homework, knowing our worth, and not being afraid to walk away if a deal isn't right for us. We also emphasized the significance of keeping an open mind and being willing to compromise for the sake of achieving a fair outcome. But remember, just like any other skill, negotiation requires practice. Don't be discouraged if you don't get it right on your first try. Keep practicing these tips, and soon, you'll become more comfortable with negotiation. The more you negotiate, the better you'll become, and the more money you'll save. And remember, every dollar you save, is a dollar you can put towards your financial goals. If you found this video helpful and interesting, kindly hit the like button. It fuels our motivation to bring you more ways to better manage your finances. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You wouldn't want to miss our upcoming videos. We've got a lot more financial hacks and tips coming your way. Thank you for watching. Remember, the art of negotiation is a powerful tool in your financial toolkit. So, start practicing and watch your savings grow.